guest. Uh, there's an interesting statistic here from uh, the business daily Africa.com. It's a very long passage, but I'm going to shorten it so that we build up on that regarding matter savings. And uh, it says, let me get it very fast. It says Kenya, like most African countries, still suffers from chronic low savings rates, primarily attributed to financial illiteracy. And according to a 2021 report by EFG Hammers, Kenya's savings rate calculated as the difference between income and consumption, expressed as percent of the GDP, was at 13%, which is way below Africa's average of 17%. By contrast, the neighboring Uganda and Tanzania have already crossed the 20% mark, even though the per, per capita income is significantly lower. Today, more than ever, financial education is a core life skill, and as more households are living from paycheck to paycheck, loosely defined as the ability to understand and apply different financial skills effectively, including personal financial management, budgeting and saving, financial literacy, making individuals self sufficient. Now, here's where it gets interesting, and I love it. Kenya's poor saving culture is attributed to high spending power, especially by young people who follow international trends closely. The report further cites minimal mentoring and financial illiteracy as contributing to the low savings culture. Achieving financial well-being is more than how much money you make or whether you know how to make or how to invest in the stock market, especially the digital wallet space. And then uh, the last part uh, that I think will build up on what we're going to talk about, it says, like most African countries, Kenya has alarmingly low financial literacy levels with a population of approximately 50 million people. Only 38% of Kenyans are financially literate. That is according to a 2021 Global Financial Literacy Survey. Interesting and shocking at the same time. And joining us live in studio, a powerful gentleman, we have Shadrach Sakayon Sameri. His three names. He's a student leader from RVICT, RVIST, beg your pardon. And then next to him is Kiprop Edgar, who's also president at RVICT. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to start off with you, uh, Shadrach. Yeah. Uh, maybe just a brief intro, like in less than 20 seconds, uh, who you are and what you do and you guys, where you come from. Okay. Thank you for this chance. I'm Shadrach Sakayun Sameri from Kajado County, a student in Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology, taking a course in Diploma in Civil Engineering. Uh, this is my colleague from the same institution, uh, uh, School of Discipline and Best Performance. Thank you. All right. My name is Kiptanu Kiprop Edgar, a student president from the Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology, that is Nakuru Main Campus. Yeah. Okay, I'm here today. I'm glad to be back again in the interview. Yeah. Uh, based in, in Nakuru, we are doing well. Okay. Uh, we are okay as a school. So All I right. think the topic that we are going to run today is going to expand to more people. and is relevant to us, okay. uh, the comrades, and even those people like the local one inch. So, so uh, let me get back to you, Shadrach. Um, the, this interesting research says only 38% uh, of Kenyans are financially literate. Um, do, you, do you agree that, you know, in our country, you know, a lot of people come from backgrounds where, you know, they were never taught how to have a, a relationship with money. And I love the fact that on, on our Tuesday segment, you talk about money a lot. Having a personal relationship with money, and it starts at a very, very, very young age, especially the first time you are introduced to handling big money. Or rather, let's just say small money. And I'm sure it, it starts from when I pay Sadaka, Shika 50 Bob, and I pay on a charge. But I know for a, for, for a brilliant kid with a pay on like 30 Bob, and then 20 you serve or you buy a suite or something. Do you agree with the sentence? Yes, of course. Uh, OK, uh, you have talk of the percentage, that is 38. And I agree because uh, at some point, even I can talk of even around 47 to 50 percent. Reason behind it, uh, you talk of beginning from childhood, that is uh, Sunday surface, Sunday school surface, you save that little amount. Uh, when you reach to age of uh, colleges or even high school, you even save more, uh, but the, the, the little concept we are not getting, uh -huh. we don't get the literacy training uh, uh -huh. concerning or pertaining the, the saving, the saving culture. 
you, you see, uh, just uh, you come with your own ideas, you, you say, without any training. So by attaining an age of adulthood, you begin, uh, you realize yourself, you have saved a certain amount. But the reason why we are not attaining the big percentage or the, the, the population, like 60% and above, is the reason is we don't get, uh, we don't get the, the trainings while we are from childhood to youth. That's the yeah. reason why the percentage is below 40, even, as you have talked, 38%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. I agree also. That 38% figure, like, it's for those who are able to save, isn't it so? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that means that remaining or the bigger percentage of Kenyans, those are Kenyans who do not save, and that is a very big percentage. And I agree that illiteracy yeah. is the first thing okay. that is affecting Kenya and even affecting Africa. Okay. Number two, the, we said in Kenya we calculate uh, that is uh, the income you right. subtract by the consumption. So you find in Kenya or even here in, Af in Africa, like let me use Kenya, okay. the consumption rate is higher than the income rate. You earn a small salary, but your consumption is very high. And what is the reason or what is the cost of this consumption rate being high? It is the cost of living that you're experiencing right now in Kenya. Right. You cannot be in, um, eligible to save something just because you earn as it goes, as you budget. Right. Affecting common monarchy, affecting most of the comrades. Right. With the cost of living now, I yeah. promise you, even a bit, the percentage will increase Right. of those who will not be eligible of saving something. Okay. Uh, the, this point caught my attention. It said, uh, Kenya's poor saving culture is attributed to high spending power, especially by young people who follow international trends closely. I don't know what that means from a student's mindset. Yeah, for me, that, uh, the meaning of that, like if I can use an example, whenever there's something new now, Youths are the first people to run for it. Take, for example, a new smartphone on the market now. The youths will be the first one to run for that. An example yeah. of a new brand of a car. Okay. So I think that the meaning of that is, uh, so you find a Kenyan person has no money, yes, but has seen something new in the market. So he or she will use all the money even to to, to, to access some loans in order to purchase that new thing. Okay. And that's what I can call an unbudgeted budget. Right. You are running a budgeted budget. Right. See? That is according to me, that's how I understand. Right. Yeah. But sometimes you can't spend what you don't have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's never makes people to go and indulge in other, you know, in other things that later on affect their mental health. Exactly. Also being a mental health awareness month. Yeah. And also Mother's Day in just a bit. Um, let me get back to you, Shadrach, okay. uh, on the same. Do you feel like even in campus, there's, there's a certain pressure to spend what you don't have? And that will lead to people getting you know, out of hand and engaging in other ridiculous and scrapless deals. Uh, in other words, they call it wash wash. And then there's a certain pressure called mocha. You know? And also in campus, it plays a huge role in terms of appearance as well. You have to look on point you have to appear, you know, that you have something going on so that the ladies can like you or the teachers can like you or just whoever will like you so that, you know, you have a peaceful stay in campus. Do you think that contributes to, uh, especially young people, to not have savings? Of course, yes. That one, I can agree with you. And uh, in the same case, you have talked of the youth in the campuses or the comrades running for the... the in, in fact, we talk of living the other people's life or the lifestyle of the other people. You want to, let's call peer pressure. You just get influenced by other people because you want to, maybe the comrades are going for parties uh, and you want as well not to be left back by your friends. You feel shy. And that one is, is getting the comrades to have that pressure. And that one, in fact, I can add a value. Back in the, in the campuses we are or where we live as comrades, uh, it is causing most of the comrades to, to get into debt or uh, 
so that they can attain or they can they can obtain what their friends are uh, sharing like parties so for me i can say that one is uh, making the the comrades live their life standard uh, a comrade who is you come from a, a humble background and you find you get a friend who come from a rich family that's on, on another different perspective so you are forced because you want to to get what your friend have you can get close to that guy maybe uh, maybe a girl or a, a, a boy so that you can live the same life so uh, because i can see my yeah. friend is want to add this i have an addition of that i can give uh, an example of you biting what you cannot chew. Exactly. That is what is affecting the young men right now in the world. Uh -huh. Especially here in Kenya. Okay. You want to gain something that you are not at that level. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the moment we as youth will accept ourselves, and uh -huh. it affects across gender. Okay. It's not for the men only or for the ladies' gender. It's across. Yeah. If I can, I can use an example for the ladies. Mm -hmm. Like what we see in college, universities, you find a lady wanting to dress same as maybe a comrade from, let's say Nairobi, I use an example. And this student or this lady comes from a humble background there in the remote areas. So okay. you'll find she's struggling more okay. to reach there. Aya, for ladies, they're not, I cannot say, or I can put it like, they're not uh, thieves actually, mostly, but this time, we hear some, mm -hmm. but it affects the men side most. You find now, anataka kitu flani, but ju hafiki hapo, ananza kuwa muizi. You see? It forces, and that's why I put it as biting what you cannot chew. Okay. I, I think the same point on the same case, uh, biting what you cannot chew. Uh, you find most of the comrades come from the, the same point, come from the humble background, and you find uh, the, the parents are able just to obtain the, the usual or the, to pay the school fees rent only. So you find most of the comrades, because they, they want to get maybe what their friends are eating, their, right. their life standard that one forced them to get or to, in, to get influence yes of course they are not getting to be they don't get to be th in thieves but the situation or the circumstances is forcing them mm. uh, is forcing them to get into close for example uh, a mm -hmm. friend come from a rich family okay. have enough amount in their pocket and you find the, the, the student from the humble background uh need to acquire the needs the, the basics one mm -hmm. like, like food you find comrades needed to live yeah cucumbers so yeah. you find you it that one the, the condition you are will force you to get close to the rich uh, child either when atabia mzuri ama atabia mbaya but you are forced to get close or engage with him mm -hmm. uh so that you can get the little amount the upkeep for the basic need yeah. and, and even that one is contributing to the to the unhealthy relationship because you are forced to get close maybe a, a girl from the, the humble background anatomy my drugs because of the little amount right. you know the constant thing that I've I've gotten from what you guys have mentioned is that uh, Sometimes when you come from a home where, you know, you're not being provided for enough, yes. it might cause you to get out of hand and engage in some other things to survive. In fact, yeah. But then uh, I'm also questioning that, you know, as a father, as a mother, you're taking your kid is in campus or as a guardian. Okay. You understand uh, very well that they need support. One of your party is financial support. I'm a, let's say this, this, these are one of those that we call toxic parents, as in Alikweka campus na kasemoeni mkubwa, you're 18, bambana. Is it one of those types? Exactly, and that was the point I was coming, Mr. Brian Sako. I was coming on that point. You find an example, parents are not providing, some, not all, are not providing enough, enough requirements for their students. 
especially in campuses, colleges, and even in high school. Okay. So parents also are supposed to chip in in their responsibility to support their children in various institutions. For example, now, you find a parent giving less pocket money to a, his, uh, his uh, let me not call a child, but a student. Uh -huh. So this student, in a few days, yeah. the pocket money will be over, so it will force to act on other things. Yeah. I, I cannot blame also the parents. Sometimes we are not all at equal average. But right. what I can say, like our institution, Arvist, is a center of equalization. Mm -hmm. That means when you join like our institution, we are all equal. So sometimes in any institutions, we need to be treated at an average level mm -hmm. to avoid this overspending or those who are low on the bar, mm -hmm. you see? Yeah. So uh, I think also what is affecting the youths now, we the youths, is the technology. The technology is really running too fast. So and can we, we, can youth, we, blame we are chasing it. You know, I mean, I thought technology is here to aid us in even having an easier life. It's giving more opportunities, even in terms of the digital space. It is doing so, but to some extent, but we the youth are getting confused in uh, learning. Especially Why should what, I say so? what, what parts exactly are confusing? Like, uh, I, I gave you an example of uh, having a latest uh, smartphone. Okay. Yeah. When there is a new brand in the market, you will find any youth or even me, I will want to have that phone. And the same functioning will be the same. The phone that you have previously that you had performs the same function, just like the other one that has been. It also, it's only a few different cases. So you find we youths, what is affecting us is that we are chasing technology. Uh -huh. And we are really, we want to be rich very fast. Okay. We are not going the pace of our parents. Uh, we remember our former parents used to go step by step. But step now step. you see, mm -hmm. it's an extent of even, you find men gambling or okay. students gambling to win a million. All right. yeah. Yeah. So those are the things that are affecting us that you can see we are okay. not saving. All right. yeah. Okay, yeah. so you discuss about the, just adding a point to my colleague here, that is Edgar. Uh, you talk of technology, and for us, we say technology for in industrialization. Uh -huh. uh, technology is made, to my understanding, or uh, as technicians, we talk of technology for industrialization is just to, to get more uh, innovative in the industries, not uh, getting the, the, the techniques. Uh, so when, when a new phone uh, or a good phone brand market, you go for it and you start getting the nini, you know, nini, uh, nini, iso nini, kama wash, wash, vitu kama hivyo. So in a contribute, like, um, but for me to my understanding, you study, uh, nini, uh, you talk of humble background. When you say a student or a comrade come from a humble background, uh, students, uh, most of the students, maybe unapata your family, parent, uh, akona, stud, ma student mengi. Uh, wing, mumia form for, and then it's like uko tupale nyumbani. You just decide. We are talking about saving, right? So what you have saved, we talk of from childhood, ama ukiwa high school, una decide ku ku begin ka small course, una una. Mm -hmm. So when unampatia msasi, just a chance to take the others through the secondary level or high school yeah. level, you decide to start or uh, begin a short course. Yeah. Uh, short for short term service. So when you come to campus or uh, for insti such institution like Arvis, uh, you realize that you have come while you are innocent. But you want to obtain their culture, and you must do that. And you want to force it force. You get into that nini of a spending mm. that una end up at a bilo kumaliza ile short course yenye ulianza and that's why most of the student wanna get a mess uh, right. another another point concerning about the humble background uh, uh, mo, uh, other students wana patanga kitu kama scholarship maybe from area ama county level yeah. so you go to the nini to such institution uh, so they provide you with the basic need but they don't give you the upkeep like the, the, the students who come from the rich family. 
So you find Mana. that will force you because unata wishile maisha tu yenye your friends wanaishi it na right. force ata we raise standard. But, yeah, but I feel like that's from um, a peer, is it a peer pressure uh, mm. mindset? Yeah. And then it also stems down from, I think, from a, mo a moral perspective. Because yeah. I'm sure if, if you come from a grounded home yeah. where you are taught how to behave, you are modeled for how to be a gentleman or how to be a respectable woman, even in campus as a kid, there's things that you will not, you know, take you off your moral compass. But anyways, let's switch gears. Also, before you have savings, yeah. you must at least either be working. Yes. You have a business. I don't think uh, borrowing loans can make someone to have savings. But then 90% uh, of the young people, especially in our country, that are unemployed, they don't have savings. In short, when you don't have a job or you don't have a business, you don't have money. So if you must save, then you must have sources of revenue that are coming in, streaming flawlessly and consistently as well. So how do we, how do we tackle this monster? You don't have a job. You don't have a, a, a business you're running. But yet, here there is uh, the pressure to at least have savings. And you know savings, it's not just even having savings, it's having savings and multiplying them. You know, having money in the bank, but then investing again. See, it is a up for 40,000. It's 40,000, but being invested in other areas, which sometimes you're not sure they're going to give you profit or returns. Now, from uh, a student's perspective still, at what point do you start saving and where do you get the money to save? And how do you structure your expenditure to a point, for example, if a parent is giving you 5,000, at least you're spending, you're spending, you know, the required amount and then saving the required amount. I just don't know. Let me start with you. Okay. To begin with, uh, that is my point on saving. In my mind, I have two different ways of saving. Number one, according to me, you can have a forced saving. Forced what saving. do I mean by a forced saving? Uh -huh. you are, I can use an example. You are given okay. by your parent, let's say, a pocket money of 10,000. Okay. Then you have done your budget is that you can run uh, maybe you can use around seven thousand. Okay. So the other three thousand will force you yeah, due to your to your nezetumia kujinima. That's why I use it. Sacrifice. Yeah, sacrifice. Mm. sacrifice. I just want to sacrifice and save this three thousand. Okay. Then the the other perspective of saving is when now you are in job, you are earning a salary, or you are running a business. Mm -hmm. So. A uh, normal saving in that or an, uh, that understanding of saving at that account is that you are running a business that has profit, so that profit is what you are saving. Yeah. I don't know if you are understanding me. I'm getting it very yeah. clear. So there is forced saving and you have that one that you do it just because you have run uh, to a profit, so you can keep. So okay. what is affecting most of us uh, as youths mm -hmm. and the biggest insecurity and threat to our country today is uh, unemployment to the youth. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm worried that when I'll finish maybe my school, mm -hmm. I'm not that sure that I'll be employed because if we have uh, 2010 students mm -hmm. still tarmacking and tracking at home, uh, even to get internships, even mm -hmm. to get for internship. Mm -hmm. So the remedy of this is first, the government to come up with a policy that can ensure right. that when students are done with their campuses or learning, they can get assured that they are employed somewhere. Yeah. Okay, I know it can be a pressure to the government, since we youth, we are the majority now, I think in the world and even here in Kenya. So managing the youth now is a bit tricky to the country. But I want to echo, before you, I want to echo Mr. President, that is uh, Dr. William Ruto. Uh -huh. Recently, he came up with an idea of ha having a connection with Germany, in that right. you can finish schooling here, and you're employed in Germany. Right. That will ease, at least when you have a multiple number of youths being taken there to work. Yeah. I think now that's when the youth men will work, that is when they can earn salary, and that's when they will save. Is that not brain drain? But anyways, we'll not talk about brain drain right <laughs> now. Not right now. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. I will add the point to my colleague that uh, as comrades, we are running uh -huh. short of, short of uh, money that we can save. Because we are not employed, in the same case, uh, we don't have businesses that we own. But yeah. to my understanding, 
Uh, Just a minute. But what happened to starting early? You know, when you <laughs> when you look at the histories of the biggest empires, even in business, uh, I started mine with just two mandazis. I was hawking, but now here I have a mega mall. You know, what happened to starting early and looking for alternatives? You know, personally, I know someone who started off in campus as selling sweets. Easy. She's a brand ambassador of a very, very, very big company that she has shares in. Okay. What happened to having that creative mind as early as first year in campus? Okay, before he continues, I can cut short and say, uh, look at now, uh, how many are we now, like for example in Kenya? Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. I can't dispute you that uh, there were examples of early, who, early investors who started very low. Look at that time and look at this time now. You gave an example of a mandazi. Yeah. Go outside, yeah, start uh, hawking yeah, mandazi. How many people are hawking mandazi? Also say jimbili, say easy, now is, uh... Yes, how many people are hawking the mandazi uh -huh. right now? Uh -huh. So you find it is also the pressure in that. Even today, let's not go for cheap things like mandazi. Let's go to a boutique. How many boutiques are you in Nairobi? Uh -huh. And compare so, with that investor who started uh -huh. earlier. That's why you can find a youth has opened a boutique here in Nairobi, but he can go the whole week without selling anything. Just yep. because. But that's part of the hustle and bustle. And that's what is returning <laughs> us behind because there's no, like, you stay a whole week without selling and you want to sell. You never know tomorrow, you try again tomorrow. And that's why I'm giving you an example. You like, you'll find the first you know. time, uh -huh. or those early investors, they had an opportunity because you find maybe he was the only person selling the only commodity. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now, I can say there's stiff competition. Is this stiff competition or lack of market and opportunities? Stiff because com competition is co competition must be there. Yes. Whether you're in business or any career, you're always competing yes. against someone, yes. or someone is always competing with you, so that you stay in check and you guys have a market margin as well. So you can't say competition is the problem. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe it's there that there are no opportunities, or there's just no space. According to me, we cannot say that uh, 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 it's lack of uh, what you said. I mean, to me, is that stiff competition. Like, for example, mm -hmm, you have a boutique near stage where people drop from the vehicle or a light. Uh -huh. So the person will not have that time to go deep inside the town to buy from your boutique the same commodity uh -huh. that he or she could have buy here. Uh -huh. yeah. So it is disadvantaging in a way. So what environment will favor you? But we'll come back to <laughs> yeah, that. Okay. Uh, we're talking about a I will just add the, uh, the point uh, to my guy. You, you, you have talked about uh, saving early. Mm -hmm. and you Starting are, early. Yeah. Uh, you are talking, uh, you are communicating with the right person. I'm a good example. But though you had mentioned that your savings are intact. <laughs> <laughs> Before we come on, yeah, you, had, you had said yours are uh, 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 yeah. uh, So, uh, what made people begin saving? Like, um, uh, let me talk of comrades uh, back in the institution we are. Like, uh, my friends, when you're to you know that while you begin to knock up all tree, Kido, kido go to that, like, uh, you have talk of two mandas, but all oh, alianza na kukumoja, kutaga, vitu kama hivyo, kwanza business kama hiyo. What made them to start, ni, my friends walikuwa nini wa mamalisa form four, and it's like, that was the end of their uh, education, what if you the peak of their success in education. No. So they decided, uh, why should we uh, start with nini, hii, hii mambo na poultry too, because, they dwell on agriculture, walifanya agriculture, so they decided to continue. Mm. Just to give a short story about the guys so that we can have the lessons. Okay. So uh, this guy, the, this case begin with a uh, poultry farm, Kidogo, Kidogo to Yakuji, Limisha short course. And uh, later on, they had objective, the noble objective uh, concerning the innovation, that later they came to expand the business uh, came with the ideas of uh, uh, the, the easy incubators, the cheap incubators, I mean, which can be used for coming up with uh, a good number of chicks compared to one hand. Mm -hmm. So the, their objective was to expand their, their skills, uh, and at the same time, it is a way of investment on their own. Now we okay. making a foundation. And then we're not a person. No, not part of a person. Now, okay. currently, we can't do it. And uh, Arvist is a good example. 
Okay. We have one guy when I am a supply all over Kenya mm -hmm. incubator mm -hmm. at affordable price cheap. Mm. So, so that at a when I am a form four and I as a uh, afford the nini the incubator and at mm. the same time and I said to me come on invest me. Yes, okay, you're burning, me you're burning. Brands. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot dispute your point on uh, like uh, like what you said that. Uh -huh. Uh, having to start up somewhere small so that you can grow. Yeah. Why is it not picking up at this moment compared to uh, before? Uh -huh. This is because uh, the high cost of living now, and I'm sorry to say that, I'll repeat yeah. even mm. 20 times, the high cost of living. of living. So you find somebody can start that business of mandazi, okay. selling mandazi, selling mandazi, but okay. the same profit that she or he will earn will just mm. still come back to the to the, the same commodities is buying, he or she is buying from the current cost of living. Mm. And that's what is affecting us. Ah, yeah, number two, we have said Af in Kenya, um, majority are illiterate on budgeting, on let's say even running a business. Why should I say so? You find you are running a business without knowing that uh, there are some extent you can have uh, emergencies. Yeah. Yeah. So have you budgeted that when I have an emergency, I can use this amount? Yeah. avoiding uh, removing it from the profit account. So you find in Kenya, uh, we, 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 we the youths, you can start up a business, yes, but you don't have the emergency saving. Yeah. So you save the profit, but whenever an emergency arises, you lose the same profit. Yeah. So is that an achievement or a, it is like a, a backward movement? Right. So it's a continuous process. The day that our youths will be more educated on budgeting, yeah. That will really make us to strive and go forward. Yeah. And I cannot speak as I'm 100% uh, pure. Okay. I remember only Jesus Christ was the one who, <laughs> if I can put it. Yeah. So uh, it's affecting all of us, and that's why I'm yeah. saying we, all of us. Yeah. yeah. Why are we having some disputes in colleges, universities? We are having even an extent of killings. Mm -hmm. It is because people, let's say, join in a relationship together. Instead of focusing on the relationship on building one another, once one become, becomes a tick on the other, if you understand the characteristics of tick. And on that note, even right now, you can't you know, date if you don't have money. Exactly. You can't marry. Exactly. Uh, over the weekend, <laughs> I was in a wedding that was very close to me. Mm. And there's demands from both sides. Yes. If you can't give this huge amount of money, yeah. then you can't take our baby girl yes. because she has some certain levels as where she has achieved. But then I was looking at it from a point of, you know, what happened to... Um, negotiating and networking but anyways that's a story for another day also now for a person who is working you know maybe for example you're getting a hundred thousand and uh, the standard you know, they say more money more problems you, know, you are living in this Porsche apartment yes the money you're getting you can afford it but then uh, when it comes to even spending now yes you're paying your rent uh, you're able to take care of some of these house bills but when you're done everything is done there's no savings. Now, for such a person, how can they budget to a point, yes, yes, you're living in a good house and you can afford to pay the house, but then there's at least something small in a savings account. And I understand the dynamics of saving is the first, you must have an account, and then second is you must have the money, and then the third one, maybe assets that bring money, and maybe sources of revenue. How can a person balance that? Excuse Yeah, sure, you can go first. Okay, uh, let me just tell what my friend could have said that uh, we are talking about to balance the supply and equilibrium. Is that to balance the supply and demand at equilibrium point. Is it so that what you get the income and the the income and what you consume must balance at a certain point, right? So uh, let me talk about the some people may wish to live a high life standard. Like Rent, eco, mm, chakula, all the logistics like transport, uh, you still need to share uh, or uh, share your, 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 to say many, the, the, you want to, you have some saving and you want to share to your friends, right? So, in, in a, in a, in a, let me talk of uh, if. You want to balance what you consume 
and what you get. You must have a budget, right? Yeah. Because he had mentioned. if yeah. you don't have a budget, then, uh, then the, the, the supply must be higher. Uh, not the supply, but what you consume might be higher than what you... Because that's irregular spending, and it's not intentional spending. Yeah. Yeah. But now my, my point is, uh, how do you balance uh, spending habits? Because spending habits contribute to whether you'll have savings or not. So if you, you have good spending habits, it means you'll have something to store. Even if it's just, uh, like let's say a thousand bob, you can be saving a thousand bob every week, and you still, you know, at the end of the day, there's always bad days. Bad days will always be there. Yeah. Uh, before I drive my point, I can come this way. Number one, for you to save, or for you to have a good saving, as per now, as per this generation, as per the time we are living in, your girlfriend or your wife or the friends around you will determine your savings. Okay. Why did I use the three An examples? Interesting one. If you have a girlfriend uh -huh. who is a spendthrift, always on your pocket, oh, we want to do this, oh, we want to do this, oh, oh I want to eat this, like there's no single day she can uh, do without. I promise you there's no day you'll save. Number two, that is a girlfriend. I'm no. speaking now. Not right? even a wife. Yeah, I'm, I'm going now to a wife. Oh, That's a okay. girlfriend. You know, girlfriend. They're on a side chick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a wife also, uh -huh. who also does not understand you. How, uh, she is always bringing those all lots of problems unto you. That there's no day he will give you, you as a man, she. a room yeah. to, to, to have peace of mind. You'll mm. never save. Mm. You see? Number three, I mentioned about friends. If you have friends who are at every time, oh, let's go out for shisha, let's uh, go for liquor. Right. I promise you, those are miscellaneous expenses that you cannot incur. Right. You will be, like you will be going, you take liquor, which was not in your budget that I'm going to take liquor. Right. So what can we do uh, to, for, uh, that, for that person now you mentioned that, yes, he has the money, he has done everything but the problem is on saving. Mm. I promise you that that person, uh, following the three people I've mentioned, mm. that is where he or she loses Control. the money. And I'm not talking of a man, even the same applies to the Ladies. opposite, both sides. Both sides. So that person mm. is rotating among the three things I've that said. That environment. So yeah. if <coughs> that person can come out of that environment okay. of uh, poor friends, of a poor girlfriend. You know, a girlfriend is that one good that can tell you, oh, we can buy this. Not about, oh, let's go out, let's take a plane to South Africa. Let's, you find yourself using a lot. You've not saved anything. So what you had for as your profit yeah. is not good. Okay, okay uh, just, to just add a less than a minute and then we sample feedback. So really just to add a point about oh. what you have said, at some point what makes some people have uh, me wish to have uh, saving, but they are unable. Uh, you find, let me use an example like I'm working uh, in, at, at a remote, let, let's talk, let me use an example of a teacher who is working on a remote areas and another one in urban centers. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, a person who is on a remote area doesn't have those logistics, right? Like, and compared to Namunyanaishi, uh, a band sender, mm -hmm. you pay, you rent, compared to a teacher who is in remote areas who can get just a structure or he's living in his home or her home. So I'm talking about the geographical position, right? Okay. You can as well decide to, to get close to where you work so that you can reduce the logistics. All right, um, I'd love to, you to sound off on this one very fast before you sample the feedback, because it's coming in. Um, what if for this kind of a person, uh, they're attempting to sell, yes. immediately they start saving to, if you get to like 30K, something pops up and the expenditure kaput. Immediately on Africa, 100K, something happens. And at the end of the day, theater for Tiake the external events that contribute to the depletion of their savings. And that's where I began, my friend uh, Sakwa, when I said, uh, here in Kenya, we cannot differentiate between saving 
and, uh, and, uh, and emergencies. You see? So saving can be on its own other side, while emergencies can yeah, so be... In short, so in short, savings we separate account, saving emergencies account, account and expenditure account. Yeah. Account. Yeah. All right, I'm told you have to sample feedback very fast. Uh, we had asked you a question on our social media before I get back to you. Uh, Saving zako za imu wakadu ziko intact ama tuwa chane tu na we ama kita waramba haki warambi. But you guys will see your social media. Uh, let me see the one that's relevant to the topic of savings. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Ati savings gani ama madeni ndo mingi. That is Baba Chantel. And then there's one, and it was Bram Wana Sema Mwachane, and Sisi Uku Nje, Sio Kuzuri, Ata Kidogo. Okay, Naomi Mamake Preti, and Sema Chaneni, and Maisha Yangu. Oh my goodness, uh, Blessed Brian Scoop, and Sema Good Topic. But then I may say, a complaint there to my partner. Aha, uh -huh. Jeff, DJ Boy, and Sema Val, my all year crushy. Val, you have a crush. Uh, Evans Ovida, Zakayo Mtawushura, Meneke Yangu. Wow, 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 wow. Kate Rin Shiko, anasema Kaganda Mranga, well represented. Uh, Ross Vini, anasema count me in Butere Kakamega County to conduct us. Thank you. And uh, last one, no, second last one, Livusi Austin, anasema wa? Vitu zingine kukumbushwa ni moto kuliko heartbreak. Anyway, Nicole Lockton, just enjoying the show. Adita Mati, thank you. And uh, last but not least, Dorcas Marsh, anasema, anasema ni ache tu. So it means things are bad, right? Yes, yes. things are bad on the ground. So we are out of time. Social media? Edgar. Just uh, social. Don't say any other word. Social media too. Oh, my social media. Yeah, very platform. fast. Yes. yes. Uh, Facebook, Edgar Kip. Uh -huh. TikTok, Edgar Kip. Uh -huh. WhatsApp, Edgar Kip. Yes. Uh, Facebook, Shadra Sakayun. Samir. All right. I have been speaking to these two powerful gentlemen, and we have been talking about the savings culture. We are out of time. Time ran really fast. They say, you know, when you're having a good time, time goes very fast. But thank you so much for interacting with us on that hashtag Why in the morning. We can call it a day. You can find me at Brian Sakwano. And see you tomorrow for Entrepreneurship Tuesday. It's going to be fun with the rest of the amazing trio. That is at Kalamival at Stephanie Yeta. See you tomorrow.